Okay, here, uh, this is Salman. And this is Kevin. And we are here for autopsy with no gloves at all regarding inception. What does that mean? It means we're going to do this autopsy and we are going to include spoilers. So either you should have seen this movie if you are listening to it. Or, or you're just really into spoilers and gloveless fondling of films. That's fine too. Either way, it works for us. But we just wanted to let you know. Okay. So is, is this film about dreams? I think that's a very legitimate question, and let's start with that. Uh, I think the first time I saw it, uh, and when I started watching it, I had this concept in mind, and I was watching this movie with the notion that this is about dreams, and I was bugged a little because the dreams, you have some surrealism and other kind of weirdness in it. And in this movie, actually, there wasn't. Uh, and. And by the end of the movie, towards the end of the movie, I was changing my opinion that actually Dream was more a vehicle and it wasn't about dreams. And the second time I watched it, that actually completely changed my opinion. And yes, yeah. it's not about dreams at all. No. I, I, I think it's about some much larger philosophical issues about um, issues of regret, about aging, about family about uh, the po potential consequences of playing with reality. And we, we can, of course, that's a lot that we could get into, but you know, what of that would you like to get into? I think the aging bit, because there are a couple of times uh, there was this con conversation between Leonardo DiCaprio uh, and Ken Watanabe character right in the beginning and at the end also about the fact, about this fear of getting old and dying alone or yeah. being alone at the end. And, and having regrets, and having about regrets you about those things, theater did not do in your youth. And, and, and uh, it was striking that there was this element of, oh, we can go back and be young again. Mm -hmm. And this was said twice, and yes. that was to a certain degree. That was towards the end of the film. That was kind of a message, <clears throat> kind of like live your life. This is you are still young, right, kind of a thing. Right. And which is striking in the sense of uh, that the Christopher Nolan himself is in mid thirties, and Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> himself is in mid thirties. I just thought that was very striking. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and and that's certainly the message that is imparted, uh, or uh, in terms of Inception in Killian Murphy's character's head, is that he is not going to follow in his father's footsteps. He is going to create his own destiny. And um, that's just kind of, in a way, the opposite of what Leonardo DiCaprio's character does. He's trying to rewrite his past. Absolutely. And Killian Murphy is, is, is put in this position where he can write his own future. So I think there's a nice juxtaposition there. Um, again, issues of family. Um, I saw, like, we talked a little bit about some similarities to other films, and particularly other Christian Nol Nolan films. And one thing I thought of was Prestige, where uh, with Alfred Borden's character, um, he's trying to get reunited with his daughter. And in this film, uh, Leonardo is trying to get reunited with his children. He can't go home, and he has to do one last deal. And uh, so there seems to be kind of a, con a consistent theme, at least, about um, fathers and children in his films. But not necessarily anything about morality. We actually talked about that in terms of morality or ethics and things like that. Right. I mean. The characters in Nolan's film seem to do things for the sake of doing those things without necessarily worrying too much about the consequences. Yeah. So in here it was uh, striking that DiCaprio brings all these people in and then doesn't tell them yeah. the potential consequences of that. He actually doesn't care. He is single-mindedly, he wants to go back to the kids and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a very self-serving endeavor that he takes a, a number of other uh, people uh, with him on. Um, what about some of these other films we talked about? I mean, it, maybe it's almost trite to say, oh, it reminded us a little bit of The Matrix and stuff like that. Um, but maybe some other films. I mean, you brought up Solaris in the yeah, car, I actually and I think that's a very interesting comparison, not as an overall film, but the elements of it. There are elements of it. Actually, what really struck me regarding uh, watching it, especially the second time, uh, and it reminded me of Solaris because um, Maul, um, the mm. character, which is Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, dead wife, I mean, she was not real. She was the projection of Leonardo DiCaprio. She was the memory of Leonardo DiCaprio. And she was the one who uh, kind of, I mean, he remembers her only in, in the state of anger, in a state mm -hmm. of... Uh, it's kind of an imperfect, imperfect. Uh, projection or memory of her. And in fact, I mean, it was asked this question, was she, well, she, was she like that in real life? And right. in fact, the answer was like, no, actually, she was very sweet. And that's what reminded me that in Solaris, the, uh, the memory was actually 
of a suicidal wife. And, and in fact, the, what's interesting about Solaris was that the character actually knows that she's a product of the memory. Uh, and it, it's not explored in here. But to a certain degree, she sense. wasn't complete. Yeah, you get that sense that Marion Cotillard's character, she knows who and what she is. Uh, so I think it's very strong. Similar to that. Let, let's bring this back to what the word you use, and it's also in the film, of projections. Back to this initial mm. question of, mm. is this film about dreams? Uh, maybe it's more about movies. Yeah, we had this interesting conversation, <laughs> and, I, and I really like that. Like, you know, yeah, this, this movie, if, if you want to sort of like compare what is this about, and it is perhaps it is more about movies themselves. Mm -hmm. Because here you have the, dream, uh, the dreams, we have architects that created, and in some sense we can think about directors creating reality, creating the architecture, and then we as the audience go in bringing our own perceptions to it, our mm -hmm. own projections to it. Yeah. How do yeah. you see? Absolutely, I think we, it, we, you could think about movies as a form of kind of co or collective dreaming, but it's not as though we're all going to dream the exact same thing. We are bringing our own past, our own histories, our own uh, preferences to it. And so in that sense, uh, yeah, I, I think um, uh, Inception is just a fantastically interesting film that uh, surely there's going to be countless essays written about. And uh, I, think, I think it's good to consider that, that, like you said before, it's not so much about dreams as an exploration, but more dreams of the vehicle to explore these issues about you know, uh, ph philosophy, uh, cinema, and things like that. So, What I, about his own genealogy? I mean, do you see connection between Nolan's films? I, I mean, absolutely, to, uh, especially to Insomnia and, um, and Prestige, where you play, you, you, these main characters uh, try to correct wrongdoings by dubious means. Now, their intentions are, are good, but there's very negative consequences for uh, Al Pacino's character in Insomnia and for... Um, uh, Hugh uh, Jackman's character in uh, The Prestige. So I think he's he's a philosophical director, um, but all the same a very entertaining one, and I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff from him. Not the case in Memento. Memento, uh, that was a different... The yes. guy was not necessarily a good guy in no, that sense. No. I, I should just mention one other thing when you're talking about the philosophical one, the difference between St Charlie Kaufman, for example, and Christopher mm -hmm, Nolan. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that, and I think the difference uh, in that sense... Charlie well, there's Kaufman. similarities. First. There, there are similarities because they are both exploring the state of mind mm -hmm. and taking that premise from there. But I think uh, Charlie Kaufman starts with a premise and then he explores the logical consequences of those and the movies can go in phenomenally interesting yeah, he, directions. Yeah. You don't know where they're going to go. Exactly. Whereas with Christopher Nolan, I think he uses that as a premise but doesn't necessarily... Exploration is not necessarily his point. Mm -hmm. He uses a thriller to be put into a particular premise. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would certainly agree with you there. I mean, it's, uh, and, and I don't think we're talking about that as being some cheaper way of doing no. it. But, uh, but again, yeah, I think somebody like Charlie Kaufman, he, he explores the philosophical premise to a very in a very creative and, and uh, unpredictable way. Um, Nolan kind of takes a philosophical premise and uses that to create a, a, a narrative, you know, story around and make block, blockbusters around. And I make think blockbusters. I think it's great I mean, that Nolan could have been doing Transformers, and he's not. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that we can go to a summer blockbuster and be wowed by. And it. I'm, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that there's like tons of 18 to uh, mid 20s uh, guys and girls going out on dates to see this film. They're going to be blown away by the visuals as well as its intellect. All right, and that's, that's it. I mean, we're going I'm, to end with that. I'm putting my gloves back on. Okay, except for the fact we should mention <laughs> that we had talked about it. What's the difference between heaven and hell? And we had said that look, in heaven, Christopher Nolan directs Avatar, and in hell, it's directed by James Cameron. Yeah, that's the only difference between. And it's and run hell. over and over, over and again. Over. <laughs> okay. All right, go see. If you haven't seen it, go see Inception.